you seem very comfortable uh, creating music that's very emotionally direct. Uh, how did you come to the point where where you decided that's how you were going to compose? Just naturally came out of how I am and and how I'm wired and what I usually connect to most. Well, I basically wrote a lot as a child and I spent hours at the piano basically improvising and making stuff up just trying to process my emotional life, especially as a teenager. And, and then I stopped for 20 years, which is really, really weird. It was a very clear moment with, uh, after being a parent, after having my son, where I just needed a way to emotionally process what all that was like. And so I found myself buying a piano for a little piano, uh, for our apartment. Uh, I found myself working with a singer-songwriter for a while. Kind of dabbled in these different mediums, uh, but it wasn't until I found the loop machine that I really seriously got back into composition. And talk to me about the influence of Reggie Watts on your music. Um, I was going to Brooklyn to see a friend DJ for parts of a concert, and I, I did not know who Watts was. And he got up with this loop machine, and it's just him standing there, turning some knobs and pressing some buttons basically pulling off the most virtuosic vocalese I've ever seen. Um, and he was beatboxing, he was singing, he was building up all of these textures and layers and rhythms, and he was just killing it. And I just remember thinking, I want to do that. I, I, I want to do that. Because I, I spent many years exploring lots of different colors on my instrument, but a lot of rhythms. And I really wanted to you know, since I'm a closet percussionist, I wanted to try to drum on my instrument and maybe sing a little bit. And so I just started thinking, well, that's my ticket. I just got to go get one of those things. And um, I, my, I went home and my husband's like, what, what do you want for, you know, for your birthday? I said, I want that. I want this. I want this loop pedal. It goes like this. And so, uh, and then I just started messing around with it. And that's how I started writing again. So, so that's a, a real contrasting influence to being part of counterinduction. How do you feel like those contrasting elements come together in your own creative work? You'll probably hear a, in a lot of my music, these changes of color. And that I learned from counter, all these years in counterinduction playing other people's pieces, going from extremes uh, to on my on the bridge, behind the bridge, way out on the fingerboard, uh, not really playing much at all, talking, knocking, like all of those things. But my harmonic language is distinctly, you know, uh, way more tonal and uh, though mostly modal. And, um, and, I, and I, I, I'm a sucker for a great groove. So, you know, put all of those things together and 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 that with you know some dense harmonies when you know when things get intense and that pretty much sums up how those two worlds kind of collided. Uh, one of the the pieces where I feel like the uh, your description and the title and the music just um, cr are really seamless is afflicted mantra, uh, which is a is a very dense piece, a uh, really intense piece, and uh, a along with the the looping and effects and the and the layers, uh, you even work in uh, some some vocalizations that I think are a little bit reminiscent of Laurie Anderson. Maybe uh, can you talk about how that piece unfolded as you were composing it? As I sometimes find myself in cycles of obsessive thinking, and uh, and at the time when you're in the middle of it, you feel this need to have it and want it and you depend on it. And then you realize, wait, this is so not what I need right now at all. And, um, and that's where the text of afflicted mantra comes from, where every time you add a word to the loop and the sentence structure, uh, it's like an additive poem. So every time you add a word, it changes the meaning of the poem until you get to the very end. Uh, 
And I had this poem sitting around, and I had the idea for this piece rattling in my head for a good year. Uh, but I, I just didn't have the appropriate life experience happen yet for me to write it. Uh, and the moment it came, I was going through a really bad time because my back went out, and I was just in a lot of pain. And when I would go to my chiropractor, part of his healing, he was a very holistic kind of guy, uh, when I was getting electric stem back, he would play stuff through headphones for me and he would play some of this Hindu devotional music for me. And there was just this melody that just stuck in my head, just clear as day. On the side at home, I was writing it out and that's how Afflicted Mantra started, where I, I put in that melody and then all of the poetry just started getting layered on. And then by the end of the piece, it was just choosing what kind of intense gnarly sounds could basically try to express what this feeling is like when you're in the middle of something like this. So, yeah, that that piece for me really convinced me not only the importance of, for me, writing as a process uh, and as a cathartic process and as a way to just sort of... Uh, distill what's happening at, a, at any particular moment, but also the importance of why I just need to keep doing it. Uh, well, I want to ask you a few questions um, before we wrap up about uh, what else you're planning uh, when you come to Pittsburgh at the end of January. And uh, you're playing a new piece by Eric Moe. I basically said, when am I going to have a viola piece? And he said, okay, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. And, and since he knows that I'm performing a lot by myself or with a puzzle or just in a very set up, I said, can you write something that I can travel with without a pianist or anybody else? And so he's written a piece called Uncanny Affable Machine. And it's just for me and fixed media, which is back then we used to say tape, you know, but now we say fixed media. And, um, and I'm now that my CD release is over, that's basically what my Christmas is, is learning this piece. <laughs> Every, I myself every year I'm not going to plan something important in January, and then every year I spend Christmas vacation practicing something. <laughs> so because we have a similar aesthetic, his stuff is very groovy, matched with beautiful lyrical and colorful uh, sounds and phrases, and then um, something that just rocks out at some point during the piece. So I'm actually really looking forward to working. On it. So that, that's pretty much my half. So uh, it would be great to see all the people in Pittsburgh come out to the show because the Warhol Museum is a great space and it's really cool.